Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about an error code, a check engine light that I got on my Ram Dually here. This has the Cummins 6.7, this is the high output version with the ISIN transmission. But I'm going to talk about the error code and what I believe may have led to it and what I did to, to sort it out hopefully. So obviously with the title of the video, the error code that I got is the P24. 59 and each time i've gotten this error code i only got this error code and this error code alone it wasn't like there was two or three different ones attached together i just got this p2459 so the check engine light would come on i take my my code reader attach it and then i'd see this p2459 and basically it's the diesel particulate filter regeneration frequency and you know i'm not a mechanic but it's my understanding that these dpf systems basically are designed in a way more or less that they're bound to fail at some point and so i encountered these issues and it's just a, a frustration of being a, a diesel owner a modern diesel truck owner unfortunately so anyway the p2459 code and by the way guys i'm not a diesel mechanic so i'm just reading you information that i've gotten online obviously but basically the P2459 code indicates that the regeneration process has not been completed with the desired frequency over a programmed amount of time or miles. And so that's the error code that I got and I began to research forms and you know just scour the internet because I knew that if I took the truck into the dealer, more than likely, especially the first time it happened, they're just gonna clear the code and say, you know, keep driving and see if it comes back. And so that's exactly what I did. I made note of the code, made note of the, the mileage, the date, and then I kept on driving. Of course, I researched it in the meantime, and there's just tons of different possibilities, other owners that got the same code. Although a lot of them that I read got other codes associated with it and had a lot more miles. So I just kept driving the truck. And then about 400 miles later, the check engine light came on again and again it was the same error code the p2459 so at that point i decided okay i'm gonna figure out what do i need to change to make sure this this code doesn't come back on and one of the things that i read concerning the p2459 error code is that if the exhaust pressure fails to reach the desired level or if the PCM detects that the regeneration process has not occurred within the desired degree of regularity, a P2459 error code will be stored. And like I said, I got the code once initially, cleared it out, and then about 400 miles later, it came back on. And so that's when I started to really dive in deep and, and research what I should do. And so after doing that research, there are really three things, I guess, that I, I walked away with that I believe could be partially responsible for the P2459 error code, three practical things. And, uh, and really the third one has a lot to do with preventative uh, maintenance more or less. So I'm gonna go over those three things in the remainder of the video in hopes that if you're an owner of this same engine and you're getting the same error code, similar to mine, the P2459, maybe this will, will help you. Again, guys, I'm not a mechanic, so I'm just sharing what worked for me as an owner. All right, so the first thing that I walked away is that, you know, diesel trucks, it's no secret that they like to run hot, obviously. And for me, I use this as a daily driver in addition to towing my fifth wheel over there. And unfortunately, that daily driver trip is not a nice long, you know, hour, two hour long trip. It's a shorter, you know, round trip where usually under 30 minutes, the engine is, is off. And so that's one downside that if I'm using this as a daily driver, I'm subjecting it to that shorter trip, that's not the ideal scenario for a diesel engine, let alone a modern diesel engine that has all the, the DPF and everything employed on it. And so I think that is one thing that possibly led to the P2459 is just that I had a shorter trip every day, you know, that's repeat day after day after day, and maybe the soot and everything got clogged up on the, the DPF there and so perhaps that's one thing well i can't really change that i mean i can't just uh, go on a joyride every day for an extra 30 minutes okay but that is one thing that i believe may have caused this to to show up earlier the other thing and this one's really big this was a just a complete misunderstanding on my part and that has to do with idling your diesel engine and you know obviously like i said diesel engines they like to run hot we all know that 
and I knew my trips were shorter and so I thought well if I'm going to be you know running in and out somewhere five minutes uh, you know ten minutes and especially if it's cold outside I'll just leave the truck running idling and that way it stays nice and warm and hot and that'll kind of make up for the fact that I got a shorter trip to begin with and so yeah basically I was letting the truck idle for an additional five to ten minutes at a time instead of shutting it off thinking that I was doing it a favor so you know even when I would go fuel up I would let it idle while I was fueling up. I wouldn't shut the engine off. And I'd think about, you know, you go to a truck stop and you see all the big semis and they're letting their trucks idle the entire time. They just let them run, 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 run. And so I was thinking, well, I'm going to do the same thing here to compensate for the fact that my trips as a daily driver are a little bit shorter. And I think I was perhaps shooting myself in the foot, so to speak, because it's my understanding now that diesel trucks, when they idle specifically, they have the potential to create a lot of additional additional soot that could then you know clog up and mess up the uh, DPF system there and so I think in a way I had a misunderstanding there and I think that it's probably better perhaps to shut off the engine and not let it idle so much I don't think I was really doing myself any favors by letting it idle that five to ten minutes it's probably better just to shut it off so that's kind of my new rule of thumb if I'm gonna be you know sitting somewhere uh, any more than I would uh, let's say the length of a stoplight if you're at a red light right then I'm just gonna shut the truck off you know in a parking lot or somewhere where you're still of course not driving and so that's kind of what I've been doing moving forward is not letting the truck idle so much I also read somewhere that you know a good uh, ratio as far as idle hours to running hours on your truck you should try to keep that under 25 percent but even that is considered a little bit high i looked at mine and i was just under i was right at about i think 23 24 percent idle hours compared to to running hours and so hopefully i'll cut that down below 20 percent with my new habits but i think perhaps that letting the truck idle so much was not good and not helping and perhaps caused some of the issues there with the, the air coat. Okay, so those were the first two things that I, I learned. And you know, some of that I was a little bit familiar with, but especially the idling, I just did not realize that that was really just <laughs> probably not doing myself any favors uh, whatsoever. And so a lot of that has to do with changing your, your driving habits. But the third thing, as I was reading in different forums, the third thing that I learned is that a lot of people are running additives in their diesel fuel and some of them i mean swear by these additives in the past when i heard about additives i just thought they were you know maybe you're paying for nothing basically that they're overrated perhaps or just unnecessary i mean i would think well you know if you really needed additives then why didn't ram or cummins say hey you need to run these additives right and so i never tried additives never ran them whatsoever on my diesel truck before but a lot of guys were saying hey i got these different error codes related to the dpf system started running additives and it cut down on the number of regen cycles and you know uh, soot and things getting clogged up in the dpf system and ultimately solved the reoccurrence of those those error codes and so for the first time i thought well let me try some some additives so the first one i did is from the hot shot brand the hot shot secret here and it's another one that they make called the extreme diesel treatment and i'll put a, a shot of what that looks like but basically it's kind of a one-time treatment that you do maybe every six to, to 12 months on your truck and you basically dump the bottle in your your uh, fuel tank that's full and so i've got a 50 gallon tank so i did one full heavy treatment of that extreme diesel from hot shot and you know let it run throughout the, the the course of the tank there and then i also bought this one here which is more of a kind of every fill up type of deal so they call this one the everyday diesel treatment and you basically just fill it up according to the the uh, fuel guidelines there and add it to your diesel every time that you fill up and so i've started running this uh, over the last two or three thousand miles on the truck so here's the good news since i have tried to minimize the amount of idling on the engine here combined with running that extreme diesel treatment plus the everyday additive here to the fuel the p2459 error code has not come back yet so i was getting that p2459 error code at about 400 mile intervals approximately and i think i'm up to either a thousand or fifteen hundred miles since the last time i cleared it since i've been making all these changes and running the additives 
and I have not gotten the P2459 or any other error code for that matter. And so I'd like to think that perhaps it had something to do with driving habits and you know just some excessive idling time, shorter trips, that sort of thing. And so perhaps the, the uh, fuel treatments, the fuel additives are kind of counteracting them now and helping uh, keep things a little bit cleaner. So I'm not gonna say I swear by these fuel additives yet. I'll have to come back with a, a long-term update, but it appears that they have made a difference. So I do plan to use this everyday one here and then maybe do the extreme, you know, once uh, once a year or so. Another thing that I'll say, and by the way, this video is not sponsored by Hot Shot Secret, but another thing I'll say, since I have been using this, I have noticed that my MPG has ever so slightly increase and what really impressed me is while i was towing you know because the fifth wheel over there weighs 17,000 pounds and when i tow almost always i'm getting between 9 to 10 miles per gallon consistently i mean i don't think i've ever broken 10 miles per gallon doesn't matter you know if i'm going flat uh you know up a hill down a hill it just seems like i've never been able to break over 10 miles per gallon but on the last trip that I took, and it was a pretty substantial trip, several hundred miles towing the fifth wheel, and it had some mountains involved, I actually got 11 miles per gallon. I was absolutely shocked. That is the first time that I've ever gotten over 10, and it just so happens that I've been running these additives. So I've heard a lot of people swear by them and say, yeah, they increase your fuel economy. Well, I don't know that one MPG is really the biggest deal to get you know super excited about could have been a fluke certainly but i have noticed that the mpg you know uh, has increased ever so slightly even unladen you know typically my average is right around 15 to 16 with some mixed driving and since i've been running the uh, the treatments it's gone up a little bit 16 and a half to 17. so you know maybe it was just a fluke but i did want to point it out because it was a big enough difference for me to at least make note of it now I wanna close the video out by talking about the P2459 error code and driving habits, you know, just DPF error codes in general. And I think this is an important consideration to think about if you're planning on buying a diesel truck, a modern diesel truck, and you've got something big to tow. You know, I bought the diesel truck mainly to tow the 17,000 pound fifth wheel and I needed the dually, of course, for the, the payload. But I mean, really when you're towing that heavy, it seems like diesel is probably the best way to go, especially if you're towing frequently. You know, in my case, it turned out to be a little less frequent as far as the towing goes. And so then I'm using this as a daily driver, more or less. And I think that's an important consideration because if you're using it as a daily driver and your trips are, are shorter, you know, I think ideally a truck like this would like to run, you know, an hour at least one way, uh, you know, daily whereas mine are a lot shorter, under 30 minutes round trip. And so I think that is something that doesn't mix as well with a modern diesel engine in general. It doesn't matter whether it's you know, Ford, GM, or Ram. That's just not the, the best combination there. So that's definitely an important consideration. And then of course the idling that I talked about as well. I mean, that was just a complete misunderstanding on my part. You know, you go to the, the truck stops and you see the, the diesel trucks, the semis just idling, idling, idling. And so I just got it into my mind that that's good. We should idle our diesel trucks more and more and more. It's better than letting them sit, you know, for a five to 10 minute uh, swing. And so I really think in the end, that's probably not such a good idea uh, on these modern diesel trucks. Better just to, to, to shut them off because otherwise you might build up too much soot and it gets clogged in the, the DPF system there. So two big considerations to think about but I think that question in closing to ask is okay let's say that you're in my shoes and you have something big and heavy that's 17,000 pounds but you're only towing it you know maybe uh, once a month right 12 times a year maybe 16 times a year 20 times a year and that's it so should you get a diesel dually truck or should you go with a gasser? You know, in my case, I absolutely needed a dually because of the, the payload required. This is 4,400 pounds fully loaded in my case. So I absolutely needed a dually. 
And how many times do you see a, a gas dually truck driving down the road, right? I mean, dually and diesel are on a, almost uh, synonymous. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, I wonder sometimes in my specific situation, would I have been better off with a, a gas engine in my dually, given that I'm not towing as, as frequently? And I've never driven a gas dually truck, let alone one that's hooked up to something that heavy. So I can't speak to what that experience is like. Obviously the diesel is gonna deliver a much more enjoyable experience because it just is meant to be towing, right? But I wonder sometimes how much of a difference would it be if I had a gas engine in this truck? You know, high revving, of course, noisier, you know, not handling the load quite as well, but I would get to my destination in the in the way modern gas, you know, trucks are so powerful these days. So sometimes I wonder about that. I think the diesel experience really is supreme still with the towing, but, you know, just a consideration to think about if you're not towing as much and, uh, you know, maybe in that situation, it would make more sense to go with the gas truck. I think in my situation personally, you know, if I didn't need the payload of a dually, in other words, if my fifth wheel only had, let's say 2,500 pounds of pin weight or even 3,000 pounds of pin weight, then I'd probably opt just for a single rear wheel truck with a, a gas engine, especially because we don't tow it as often. And I mean, gas engines have come so far, even in the last couple years compared to when I bought this in 21. I think, you know, especially Ford with their 7.3 Godzilla, I mean, they were just kind of coming out and becoming popular and people were talking about how they towed, whereas now there's just tons of data on them. And of course, GM's got a 6.6 .6 out. And I imagine Ram will probably beef up their 6.4 or have some kind of replacement in the years ahead. So it seems like gas trucks are kind of making a comeback. And I think for someone in my situation where you're not towing the fifth wheel as much, even though it is heavy, it probably makes more sense to have a, a gas truck if you're gonna use that as a daily driver and your trips are shorter because really this diesel engine wants longer trips, wants to run longer and be hotter. And I'm just not giving it what it wants, I'm not doing it any favors with shorter trips. So anyways, guys, just some thoughts there for consideration and troubleshooting that P2459 error code related to the, the DPF system. Now, if you're watching this video and some time has elapsed, maybe some months or weeks since I published the video, definitely check in with me and I'll let you know if that code has reappeared after I changed, like I said, my driving habits and started running those, those additives. But as always, if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.